All right, from time to time I get comments on my uh, calculator and I thought I would uh, do a video on it because it dawned on me that uh, these are very rare these days uh, and uh, they're, they're quite interesting if you've never uh, understood what's going on inside of them. But this is a Hewlett Packard calculator. This one happens to be a 32S. Um, it's one of my favorites. I've owned it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've owned every single calculator that HP ever made. Um, I used to work at a group that we uh, used their product line for surface mount because um, they did really, really tiny surface mount stuff. And uh, a friend of mine actually was an engineer who worked on the Saturn uh, processor in the, I think it started out in the HP 70, what was it, the 72, 73, the little basic one, not the 75, but the, the I think it was the 73, and I think that Saturn made it into these these uh, calculators. I think the Saturn is is in this one. But anyway, um, so what's special about the calculator? Well, um, it's real nice. This one's a scientific one, but it says RPN, and that's what's special about them. RPN, and I'll explain what RPN is. But most calculators, you you uh, put in a number, and then you hit add, and you put another number, and then you hit equal, and then you look and you go. Uh oh, there's no equal sign on this, cal on this calculator. There's no, no equal sign. Um, there's this big funny thing here. This is enter, like on a keyboard, but there's no equal sign. So how do you use a calculator like that? Well, it comes down to the RPN. So uh, that stands for reverse Polish notation. So what is Polish notation? Well, before we get to Polish notation, how do we write um, numbers these days. If we want to add 1 plus 2, we say 1 plus 2 equals. We do that on a piece of paper. And this notation, this 1 plus 2, it's a number and an operator and a number and then and then a thing to do it. Um, and this is called infix notation. Um, there's something called Polish notation which you would write as plus 1, 2 equals. Um, and this would say um, you're going to be doing a plus operator on these two numbers. So you put the operator out front. That's Polish notation. Reverse Polish notation is that we would put the one and the two and then the plus. Okay, and that would say, okay, here are the two numbers. This is the operator that you're going to be doing on it. Okay, so this one is infix. This one's Polish. And this one is reverse, reverse Polish. Oops, reverse Polish. Okay, or RPN, RPN. Okay, so we have RPN here. So to add two numbers, you would say one, and then you have to, what, well, what do you do with one? You can't put in two yet, you have to do something. And so you hit the enter button, then you hit two, and then you hit plus, and then it puts those two together and you get, you get three, okay? So 123 plus 159 plus, or five, enter, eight, divide. Um, so the, the um, operator always, always comes at the end. And, and that actually makes it easy to do a bunch of calculations in a string. Um, so there are a lot of big fanboys of RPN. Um, but you can't buy uh, RPN. Well, I guess you can. There's, there's one RPN calculator that you can still buy. Um, maybe two. Yeah, I think there's two. So let's, let's show some more. So you can buy this one still. All right. This one is an HP 12C. This is a financial calculator. So you can do 12, 15 times. So it's reverse Polish. So you can buy this one, but it's not scientific, right? And uh, you can get these dirt cheap now. Um, they stopped making these. The whole calculator line was done in Corvallis, Oregon, uh, but these are now made in China. And it did move to Singapore for a while, but uh, yeah, Corvallis, Oregon is the home of the, uh, home of the HP calculator. All right, so this form factor came around um, originally as the 11, okay? So my name scrolled on this one, so I put my finger over it. Um, so this is the HP 11C, and uh, I've had this one since it was new. So this has been my personal calculator for a very long time. Uh, there was the HP uh, 15C, which was, so a lot, for a long time, that was kind of like the fanciest calculator that HP made. Um, here's an HP 15C in an iPhone application. So this is an official HP application that HP wrote, and it is the 15C calculator. And you can see it looks just like a 15C. So uh, you can uh, do 12, enter, 58, divide. Um, so you, you can get that for your phone. 
I believe this one costs money. Um, I think I paid like $15 for this or something. I forget. Um, there is um, another calculator that you can buy today still that is uh, RPN. And I uh, believe it'll do it either way. Yeah, it does have an equal sign as well. This is the HP 35S. Um, and so you can do things like 12, oops, oh, I've got it in hexadecimal mode. So it'll do hexadecimal modes, no, modes, modes too, but it does reverse Polish and it, it does it all heck. You can get hexadecimal and octal and binary and everything. So I use this for uh, kind of programming and stuff. The, um, the ones that came looking like this, there was an, a 16, uh, an HP 16, that was uh, uh, all, hexa, uh, all programmer stuff, hexadecimal, octal, and all that kind of stuff. So I used to have one of those, but I sold it because I got good money for it. Um, and I had a 15 too that I sold for good money. Uh, let's see here. So there's this one, HP 35S. This one's okay. It's not too bad. It's got pretty good buttons on it and everything. Um, okay, what else is there? Um, then there's the one that I've got, like I showed you that one, but there are other versions in this line. Uh, so here's a financial version of it, the 10B, but it's the same form factor and everything. Um, and then uh, the fancier version of this is this. So this is the one I keep in my office. So this is the 32S2, and this is the 32S, and this adds programmability. Um, this one has programmability as well, but this adds a whole bunch of stuff. So they're, they're both, these are both programmable calculators, as is the 35 is programmable. Uh, the 12 is programmable. The 11 is programmable. Yeah, these are all programmable. I'm sorry. Uh, this one is not. So I believe this one is not the 10B. It doesn't look like it. So I can't program that one. All right, um, and do I program calculators? Yeah, once in a while. Sometimes I'll be doing a lot of stuff in like decibels. So I'll be doing, you know, 10 log of something or something to the 10th or you know, 10 to the something. And I'll program that in and, and, and use the run stop, run stop feature, something like that. Or maybe I have a calibration factor that I need to keep accounting for and I'll just program that into the calculator. But it's very rare that I do programming on calculators. What I need out of the calculator is that it's simple to use as a calculator. And a lot of the HP calculators were great calculators, but they were difficult to use as calculators, like this one. Uh, this one is a graphing calculator. Uh, this is their 1848GX, and this one is, it does graphs, it does cool, cool graphs, if you can, if you can see that there, watch out for the polarization, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a great calculator <laughs> as far as a calculator goes, but anyway, um, yeah, that's my calculator collection. And, uh, if you're wondering what that weird thing is, the 32S, that's what it is. <laughs>